Hello, my name is Suhas Kota, and I worked on Celestial AI with the uh, beautiful acronym on the left. And uh, I've been working at, at Space ML for the last few months on ML research, and this is the culmination of my project. So let's start off with what is the biggest problem in deep learning? Well, everybody seems to agree that the biggest problem in deep learning is data. The, we have a lot of data at NASA. There's 35 petabytes in the NASA Gibbs tre image treasury, and there's 250 petabytes projected by 2050. However, all the satellite imagery has one fatal flaw. We have no labels. And we can't really go around collecting these labels as well. ImageNet itself took 22 human years to label 14 million images for much simpler tasks than satellite imagery classification. And our data set is 200,000 times bigger. This is a problem. Well, why is it a problem that we have no labels? Well, the industry standard for machine learning is supervised learning. Everybody uses supervised learning. And this sort of learning relies on the fact that every single input image has an associated label with it. We know what each image represents and we try to teach the model that this is what an image represents. And when we do have all the labels for our input images, we get a pretty high accuracy. We could have like 82% accuracy per se. As we lower the amount of labels, however, the images that don't have access to the labels are completely nullified. We have no way to actually use them in a supervised learning framework where we need to know what each image represents. So we are now at a 68% accuracy. As we take away more and more and more labels, our accuracy drops increasingly fast. And what happens at a very low amount of labels, we get no better than random guessing. Man, this is a huge problem. Who can best leverage a data set with few labels? These people will be able to learn the best about the data, and they'll be able to actually transform this into human leverageable insights. And this is where the, our project comes in, which is introducing self-supervised machine learning. And self-supervised machine learning has two general steps. The first step is usually a general understanding of the data. We have a pretext task which works on the input and tries to understand the nature of the images, what it means for an image to be similar or dissimilar. And all of this is done with zero labels, fully unsupervised. Now, in the second step, what we do is we take the associated labels for the images that we do have labels for. And we basically take our general understanding from the previous step and fine tune it. We basically tune it to the labels that we do actually have so humans can actually interpret the general understanding of the input. And the framework that we use for this is SimCLR. And this is the algorithm that we implemented in our pipeline. How does SimCLR work? Well, let's go through to step one and step two for this process. Step one is training on unlabeled images. And this is really the secret sauce of SimCLR, being able to understand the images with zero notion of labels. So what we do is we first take an arbitrary image from the data set and we generate two augmentations. Augmentations uh, define perhaps some rotations, reflections, color changing, cropping. And these are the sorts of things that we can do to edit an image without changing its class. Both of these augmentations are numerically very different from the original image, but they both represent the exact same thing. And any reasonable model that we may want to use would acknowledge that these both represent the exact same class. So we can actually constrain our model to this behavior. What we do is we ask our model what it thinks of each image. And for each image, we get an embedding. And the embedding represents is a numerical representation, what the model has made sense of, of the image. Now that we have these embeddings, we need to understand what, what should the relationship between these embeddings be? In an ideal world, these embeddings would represent the exact, almost the exact same thing because these represent the exact same class. So we enforce this behavior on our models. We basically bring the embeddings in closer and we ensure that the model understands what it means for two augmented and numerically different images to be uh, 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 similar class-wise. So let's go, uh, let's just play around a little bit with our data set, Resist 45 in a, a fun style game where I'll show you two images and you have to tell me if they are the same class or a different class. Do these two images belong to the same class? We actually see that no, these two are separate classes. The left is a mobile park home, while a mobile home park, while the right is a medium residential neighborhood. Do these two images belong to the same class? Well, if you have an understanding of basketball, know what the most important lines in this image are and disregard the forest on the right, yes, these are both basketball courts. 
Now, are these two images the same category? They are actually not the same category. The left represents rectangular farmland. Well, on the right, if you zoom in enough, you can see it's actually circular farmland. As you can see, this is a very difficult to understand data set. Even with full understanding of what farmlands are, we are having trouble discerning between what is what and what class belongs to what. And these 45 classes are very confusing for just a human. So let's see how SimCLR fares. The way we evaluate SimCLR in this task is we give it the now we give it one image from the data set and we ask it, what do you think is the nearest image or what is the nearest other image in this data set? What's the second nearest image, third nearest image, all the way to the 10th nearest image? And we evaluate the accuracy of our model. We see that for the nearest neighbor, we actually get 35% accuracy, which is impressive considering that again, we are giving it zero labels. We are just trying to see how well it learns. And what's also worth noting is when we increase the amount of data given, we get a significant boost in accuracy, which means that for our toy data sets, the small data is actually the limiting factor in how accurate SimCLR can get. When we're working on bigger data sets, we'll get even higher accuracies. And this is just another chart to represent how confused the model is. There are 45 different classes and we did the exact same task as the previous slide over all the individual classes. We see that things that deserve to get confused are getting confused. For example, medium residential, dense residential and sparse residential are all getting confused with each other. So this model is learning like a human. But this raises the natural question. Sure, we understand what it means for two images to be similar or not similar, but how can we use this for a human leverageable insight? How can we use this for satellite image classification? And this is where our step two comes in, the labeled training. What we do is consider the blue model from our previous stage. The blue model represents what it means for, you know, it re represents something that understands what it means for two images to be similar or dissimilar. What we do on this is we add in three new layers. And these new layers are able to take our general notion and kind of fine tune it and adjust it to the fact that we actually do have labels for some portion of the images. And it's kind of like an initialized base, which we can start on and start building on some understanding of knowledge that we can build on for this specific task at hand, the same way a human might learn something. Let's look at our accuracy. To evaluate our accuracy, we looked at standard supervised and we looked at uh, completely random. Uh, completely random guessing of the black line on the bottom. And if you look at the top right, you can see that based on the percent of labels that we gave it, we gave it 100% of labels, we can actually get a pretty good accuracy. We get an 80%, which is pretty high for this specific data set on the UC Merced data set. However, when we take away some fraction of the labels, our accuracy decreases. When we take away more and more and more labels, we actually get to a point where we cannot do better than random guessing. And this is quite shameful because we will not have 100% of labels for, the, for any task at hand. We only have a small fraction of labels. So we want a model that generalizes better. How does SimCLR perform on this exact same task? We see that SimCLR can actually work really well. At 100% of labels, SimCLR and the standard supervised model have absolutely zero difference. But as we go to 4% of labels, SimCLR works really well. It gets a 25% accuracy and it only gets roughly three examples of each image. And this shows that SimCLR generalizes well at low labels and it'll do even better when we give it more data. So this clearly shows that SimCLR offers promise for our, you know, for our task at hand. What are our conclusions? Self-supervised learning is cheaper, more accurate, and it performs better with more data. Moreover, it is perfectly suited for the task of satellite image classification, where we have a lot of images and very few labels. So this pro shows promise for uh, the task at hand. What are its future work? Well, we wanna work on multi-resolution and multi-spectral imagery, basically work for more complex sorts of images rather than just our standard RGB. And we also wanna work on the more recent and more efficient algorithms and expand on those. And eventually we hope to integrate this into a sort of pipeline where we can do a lot of like natural disaster detection and meteorological phenomena analysis without many examples and just with a uh, few images. And uh, yes, this is Celestial AI. Thank you for listening.